planes, trains, boats, rockets, humans have come up with all kinds of ways of getting around. But nature has her methods too. Meet the south. These barrel-shaped invertebrates move using jets of water. They take in water at one end of their body, filter it for food, and then push the water out the other side for propulsion. Salps spend part of their life as solitary swimmers, but they also join together into chains of tens or hundreds of salps, stretching meters long. The key to the salp swimming, and to its efficiency, are the vortex rings it produces. A vortex ring is created when a jet of fluid suddenly enters a region with still or quiescent fluid. Fluid inside the jet has a high velocity, and the fluid outside the jet has little or no velocity. Friction between the jet and surrounding fluid will deform the jet, slowing down fluid on the outside of the jet and causing it to roll up. Because the nozzle is cylindrical, that roll-up motion creates a toroidal or donut-shaped packet of spinning fluid. Now that it's spinning, the fluid has angular momentum, or as we say in fluid dynamics, vorticity. The vortex ring we've created will keep spinning until friction or an outside force slows it down. Vortex rings are a great way to transfer momentum in a fluid. By contrast, continuous jets are just not as efficient. You can see this for yourself right now. Try putting your hand in front of your face and blowing on it. You can clearly feel the force of the jet against your hand. Now try moving your hand further away and do it again. The force is much weaker. When you're blowing, it looks something like this. As you can see, a lot of the energy put into the flow is being lost to turbulence, making it very inefficient. On the other hand, if I make a vortex ring, vorticity keeps that fluid together and lets it propagate long distances without wasting any energy. So to see some engineering applications for these vortex rings, I came here to MIT to talk to Thanasi, who's a PhD student in mechanical engineering. So Thanasi, what makes you so interested in vortex rings? So I'm interested in propulsion for underwater robots. And one problem that these robots have in the field right now is that it's really difficult to maneuver in tight spaces precisely. One way around this problem though is that we can use jet thrusters in order to deliver specific impulses that will help the robot change their orientation carefully, a lot like how satellites do in space. But when a satellite is thrusting in space, it's doing that into nothingness, whereas the underwater robot is going to be thrusting into the water and creating a vortex ring, right? Exactly, and that's why understanding these vortex dynamics is really important for designing these kinds of thrusters. So when fluid is ejected from the thruster, two effects combine to produce the thrust that moves the vehicle. First, the mass transferred out of the jet provides a force that is similar to the force produced by a satellite's thruster. Second, there's an extra pressure at the nozzle that comes from creating the vortex ring. As the jet is forced out of the thruster, the vortex ring grows and pushes external fluid out of the way. When it does this, it feels an opposing force from the fluid it's moving, which creates this higher pressure, called overpressure, at the nozzle. When the pulse is short, these two effects produce nearly equal forces. Combined, they move the vehicle and leave the vortex ring in the wake. So that's the basics of how thrust is produced, but one thruster would only move the robot in a straight line. In order to perform precise maneuvers, the robot needs to be able to apply different forces in different directions in order to rotate and move around more effectively. When two underwater jets are pulsed near each other, they clearly interact to form complex structures. How can we tell if this affects the thruster's performance? I designed an experiment to measure how the thruster's performance changes as you change the spacing between the two jets. That sounds really cool. Can we go see it? Yeah, let's head upstairs. All right. So here I've got an aquarium full of water. And in the middle of the aquarium, I have my two quarter inch nozzles that the jets are gonna come out. Those jets are driven by my hydrostatic pressure reservoirs up here and controlled by these two valves. When I open the valves, gravity forces fluid down through the nozzles, creating the jets and forming vortex rings at the tips of the nozzle. When the valves close, the vortex rings stop growing and they start moving down the tank all on their own. To watch how the vortices interact as they move out of the nozzles, I use the camera here and backlighting on the other side to watch the two different colored jets interact. When I want to measure the forces though, I switch to a different system where I use a laser diode down here, a fluorescent dye, and a high-speed camera focused in closer to the nozzles so that I can measure how everything evolves as soon as the vortex rings are forming. By tracking the size, shape, and speed of the wake, I can estimate how much force it takes to generate the vortex ring and what the overpressure is at the nozzle. As the two jets get closer together, the thrust they produce is lower than if the two jets were far apart. This is because the vortex rings affect each other strongly when they're really close together, but lose their effect rapidly with distance. In the end, I measured that if the two jets are right next to each other and pulse at the same time, the thrust they produce can be as much as 10% lower than if they were separated a lot. So this is a really cool result because it lets designers of underwater robots figure out how they should space their thrusters. Yeah, and it also tells us how to control robots that are working together in swarms so that their jets don't interfere with each other. 
From this, we also get a little bit of a better understanding about why animals like salps behave like they do in these big swarms. Awesome. Thank you so much for showing me, Thanasi. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to my Patreon patrons for their support. If you want to learn more about vortex rings or salps, check out the links in the description below and the suggested videos in the info cards up top. If you enjoyed this, then please subscribe for more, and be sure to check out the main website over on Tumblr for a daily dose of fluid dynamics. See you next time!